Welcome to ABC News. I'm Kirsten Aiken. Leaders from across Southeast Asia are in Sydney today for the start of the ASEAN Australia Special Summit. They're here to discuss cooperation across the region, but the summit won't be without controversy. Among the guests is Aung San Suu Kyi, the head of the Myanmar government, and the Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen. Stephen Jejets is there for us. Stephen, the Prime Minister was pressed on human rights abuses in ASEAN nations today. What was his response? Oh, that's right. The Prime Minister was pressed on human rights, in particular when it came to Hun Sen, uh, the Cambodian leader, and also Aung San Suu Kyi, as you mentioned. Now, both are expected to, to face protests over the coming days from the diaspora communities here in Australia. Uh, in particular, Hun Sen faces allegations that he's essentially turned into something of a strongman, locking up both uh, journalists and political opponents, whereas Aung San Suu Kyi has uh, taken... Uh, a somewhat unfortunate trajectory from being an icon of, of democracy and hope uh, to uh, someone who's presiding over what the UN calls ethnic cleansing in, in, in the, the northwest of her country. So plenty of controversy around some of the leaders coming here to Sydney. Malcolm Turnbull was asked today, well, what will Australia say and what will ASEAN say about those human rights abuses? Will Australia and will ASEAN take a stand? And Malcolm Turnbull made it pretty clear that he would stick with ASEAN's core principle, which is essentially don't meddle in your neighbour's affairs. Traditionally, the summit has been very reticent about making sort of bold declarations on human rights or criticising anyone on that front, uh, in part because the organisation remains in some ways quite fragile. Now, the Prime Minister said he would make representations to those leaders. We understand in his meeting with Hun Sen, he did raise the importance of democracy, but he made it clear he wouldn't be using a public loudhailer to do so. Let's have a listen to what he had to say. The engagement that we have in our region is, uh, is a frank uh, relation, frank engagement with uh, all of the countries in the region and uh, the, you've made some sweeping generalisations there. Uh, I just want to say that we approach ASEAN, ASEAN uh, with the greatest of respect. Uh, we respect the centrality of ASEAN in our region. Malcolm Turnbull responding to journalists earlier. Meanwhile, Singapore's PM has fielded questions about whether China was trying to divide ASEAN. That's right. China isn't a member of ASEAN, but it has used its proxies in the uh, summit quite cleverly and effectively, uh, particularly when it comes to the South China Sea. This is a very vexed issue in Southeast Asia, uh, and a number of nations in ASEAN have actually got competing territorial claims with China in the South China Sea. Now, Australia and others would like ASEAN to push back against China a little bit more firmly, and they're hoping uh, that when the, uh, when the communique does come out on on, uh, on Sunday, uh, that we see a pretty firm reference to, to Beijing's militarisation of the South China Sea uh, and some criticism of that. Uh, now, the, the, the Singaporean Prime Minister, Li Hsien-Lung, was asked about China and about its, uh, its, its habit of using proxies here at ASEAN, saying, was, was China, he was asked, uh, actually using those proxies in an effort to divide ASEAN? Uh, his answer was essentially no, just that different countries had different attitudes to China. Those tensions, he said, were inevitable in any group of uh, countries. And those tensions, he argued, simply had to be managed. Let's have a listen to Li Hsien-Lung talking to journalists just a few hours ago. There's a shift in the global strategic balance. The Chinese influence is growing with its economy, with its strength, with its interest in the region and beyond. And there's a range of different uh, perspectives and responses to this shift in the balance uh, amongst the different, uh, different ASEAN countries, which is not surprising because the different ASEAN countries have different interests of their own and see the world differently. And Stephen, with Southeast Asian leaders down under, perhaps it was inevitable that there would be suggestions that Australia could join ASEAN too. Is that realistic? It's probably not realistic in the short term. This idea, as you say, has been kicked around for, for a long time, uh, from Paul Keating onwards. Foreign ministers, prime ministers, officials uh, have looked towards ASEAN and basically thought, well, if we are an Asian nation uh, geographically, well, why shouldn't we be part of the, the premier summit of Southeast Asian leaders as a, as a full-time member? 
Uh, and that was kicked along further this morning uh, when Joko Widodo, the, the president of Indonesia, uh, basically said in a newspaper article that he'd be very happy to see Australia join the summit. Now, uh, the Prime Minister was asked about this earlier today and he said that uh, it was a very warm gesture uh, from, uh, from the Indonesian leader. Uh, but uh, he also made it clear it's a question for ASEAN as to whether Australia should join. And most analysts think that it simply won't happen. The reason for that is that ASEAN does work, as I mentioned, on this model of consensus. Uh, if, uh, if, if, if everyone agrees, something can happen. But if only one or two nations disagree, then very quickly nothing happens at all. So as long as one or two nations remain hostile or at least sceptical to the idea of Australia joining, uh, it simply isn't going to happen. And I think that's why most analysts think that it's not a realistic prospect, at least not in the next five to ten years. All right, and the leaders' meeting, of course, is happening on Sunday. Our reporter covering that summit for us, Stephen Jedgetts, thank you.